Hi, I'm Aaron Parecki. You might notice that I'm in a slightly different set today, and that is because I just helped Lily run a live stream for her channel, and this is her set, and I wanted to give you a quick behind the scenes of what I use to make the live stream happen. So, let's get started. Okay, I want to start with the lighting, starting with the two background lights. So without my main light, this is what it looks like. I've got a pink light coming from this side and a blue light coming from this side. And then they kind of mix in the middle and form a nice gradient. And then the main key light is this large Aperture 120D, which is right around here. And it's about arm's length away from me. That pretty much illuminates my face, and then we just let the colored lights fill in the background and cast a little bit of colored light on myself as well. Let me go grab my vlogging camera so I can show you what these look like from where I'm sitting. I'll be right back. Okay, so back here now, and I'm gonna show you a quick overview of where I've got the lights placed. Starting with the big light here, Aperture 120D. The pink light is over here on the desk, just out of the frame. This is the Bowling P1, little RGB LED. It's fantastic. It's got a little kickstand on it too. So it's just sitting right there. And on the other side is this blue one standing on this little four foot tripod. And this is an Iwata L RGB LED. They do more or less the same thing, but the uh, Iwata is a lot thinner. It's not quite as well built. The Bowling is solid as a rock. It feels very sturdy, but it is a lot fatter but they're both about approximately as bright and they do have almost the same features. So that's about it for the lighting. Um, I've got the overhead light turned off, of course, and then uh, outside is not very bright right now, so it's not adding a lot of light from the outside either. Okay, next up is the camera. The camera I'm using for the stream is actually a Lumix GH5S, and I've got a 15 millimeter 1.7 lens on that. So it ends up looking about like this, so you can see it there in front of me, and it's again a little bit farther than arm's length away, and uh, I've got a monitor on top, which I'll explain in a second. The camera is actually not recording, it's just doing HDMI out to the streaming device, which again I'll talk about in a second. Because I wasn't sure how long we were going to be setting up and streaming, I actually power the camera from a USB adapter, not from a battery. So I wasn't sure how long the battery was going to last. So it's got a little battery pack that has a wire coming out of it plugged into a USB power down on the floor. Okay, moving on to audio. I wanted to have really good audio for the stream and that meant getting a microphone as close to Lily as possible. So what we're using for the stream here is the Samson CO2 little pencil mic just out of the frame. If you look at the video on the monitor, it's really just outside of the frame here. And if I pull it down, you will see it pop into the frame. So that's sitting just above the frame and means that it's pretty close to the voice. Right now what you're hearing is my lav mic, but let's switch over to the shotgun mic so you can, get, can again hear what that sounded like. So this is the shot we ended up with using the audio from the little microphone sitting up here. So this microphone is very directional, so if you'll notice when I go over here or over to the other side, it really drops off quite a lot. So if you did have two people on screen, you would probably want to mic them both with an individual mic. Luckily, this mic is usually shipped in a pack of two, so that is pretty easy. The other thing about this mic is that it is an XLR mic and it requires phantom power, which means you need to have something on the other end that can take the XLR jack and give it power. So for this stream, I connected this microphone to the Zoom F4 field recorder, and that is a fantastic little device sitting on my desk over there, which we're going to go look at right now. So for this, we're going to need some more light in here because it is very dark with only the studio lights on. So let's go turn on the main overhead light and completely kill our nice little color scheme. So the Zoom F4 is this little field recorder here. So it's got XLR on the side and a little control panel on the front, and then it sends audio out via an eighth inch jack. One of the very cool features of this little device is that it actually supports an output delay on the audio. So you can see here, I've got the audio delayed by three frames when it sends it out to out via the output. And that's important because of what this device is plugged into, which is the Blackmagic ATEM Mini over here on my desk. So with the ATEM Mini, I've got the audio coming in from the zoom. I've also got the camera HDMI input there. The trick with the Mini is that the audio input is not delayed, but the audio coming from the HDMI feed is delayed by a frame or two during processing of the feed. So that means in order for the audio to be in sync with the video you're seeing, 
we actually need to delay the audio coming from the line in because otherwise it looks like it's happening too soon. Believe me, I wish the ATEM Mini had a delay feature built into it itself, but it looks like that was not in the cards for the first time around on this model. The other thing that I had to experiment with a little bit was what cable to use to connect the audio interface to the ATEM Mini. I originally tried a little dinky cable like this, eighth inch jack, but there was a ton of interference happening in the signal loud buzzing noise because that's just a cheap little cable. So I ended up going with this nice big fat quarter inch instead and I just had to use a quarter to eighth adapter on both ends. And as you can probably hear from this lav mic, there is quite a bit of traffic noise outside. It's just not the quietest studio environment. So I made heavy use of the audio processing capabilities on the ATEM Mini and it really makes a huge difference in the sound especially when you have a good mic like this Samson. Let's now take a look at the brains of this whole operation, the ATEM Mini. I have a few videos out already about the ATEM Mini, so go take a look at those. I'll leave links in the description where I cover a lot of the features and things I absolutely love about this thing. So let me show you how I've used it in this production. We only have one camera here, so you might be wondering why did I use a switcher at all? Well, I'll show you that in a second. So first of all, the A10 Mini has the input from the camera coming in as well as sound from the microphone. One of the really cool things about the A10 Mini is that it has a media pool where you can load in a bunch of still graphics and then use them as overlays on the video. So during Lily's live stream, I was adding pictures of cats or things she was talking about on the screen on top of her video. And that's something that's super cool about the A10 Mini. You can load in a whole bunch of graphics and then you know, add them on the fly into the video. So the output of the Mini was running into this HDMI recorder on the desk here. This is recording a local copy of the program out, you know, final video that's being sent to the live stream, just so I have a copy on this SD card here. It's also showing me what is being sent out on the stream. This has an HDMI out. This HDMI out runs over to the Webcaster X2, and this is the thing that's actually doing the encoding for YouTube. This is a really cool device as well. This thing actually has a whole interface built into it. So I have the HDMI output from this device going to the monitor on top of the camera. What Lily is seeing is not actually just a monitor of what the camera is showing, it's actually showing the interface of this little device. And that's extremely cool because when you are live streaming, it actually shows the chat window of the live stream as well. So when we're over here and we're actually doing the live stream, and if I look at the monitor, the monitor is showing not just me over here, but also the chat from the live stream when people are talking. So as Lily's sitting in front of the camera, she can see both herself as well as what people are saying. That way she can answer questions without having to, you know, look away at a computer down on the side. So that's the reason I used that. Now, I also want to see the chat from the live stream. So on the output of this monitor, I actually ran over to the big monitor on my desk. So that way I'm seeing the same thing she's seeing as well. The one slightly annoying thing about the webcaster though is that it doesn't actually play super nice with the A10 Mini. I'll talk more about this in a later video, but the short version is that the audio, if you are monitoring the audio from the webcaster's headphone jack or a monitor plugged into the webcaster's HDMI out, it actually sounds pitched down like a whole step. So it sounds lower than what you're actually getting. It doesn't, it turns out fine on the live stream. Like the live stream has no problem. What, what's actually being sent to YouTube is fine. It's just if you're listening locally from that device, it sounds super wrong. And that's because of a difference in the audio processing between the two devices. The Blackmagic A10 Mini is actually hard-coded at the broadcast standard of 48 kilohertz. The webcaster is hard-coded at the consumer 44.1 kilohertz. That's why when you have a signal being sent at 48 and it's interpreted at 41, then it sounds different. I can try to demonstrate that if I turn on the audio on the monitor and just see if my microphone picks it up. Check one, two. So this is working. You're hearing an echo of my voice delayed by a few frames, but also pitched down. Yeah, that's a nightmare. I'm going to turn that off now. So basically it just means you can't monitor the audio from the webcaster and you need to monitor the audio some other way. Also the ATEM Mini doesn't have a headphone jack. So you pretty much need an additional device inserted into the mix, which is what I have here. The Blackmagic Video Assist, the five inch recorder on the desk. Of course, another limitation of the webcaster is that it can't record locally either. So if you want a local copy, you need to insert something in between the ATEM Mini's output and that, which is what this is doing here, recording locally, but also giving myself a headphone jack here so that I can actually hear the real audio that is being sent out from this at the correct pitch. 
It's a slightly annoying workaround for a pretty silly problem, but it does work out okay in the end, and I actually prefer using the webcaster for the live stream encoding because it's a dedicated device and it actually shows the chat on the screen, which I can put up on that, on that confidence monitor. And that's a lot easier than trying to do that with a mess of a computer and OBS and things like that. We're getting towards the end. Uh, another thing I had here was a little iPod touch, and this was playing music for the stream. I went and I licensed a bunch of music, downloaded MP3s, loaded them into the music app on the iPod, and then plugged this into the second audio input on the ATEM Mini. Then of course I turned that volume way down, just have it as a nice little background music and set that to loop, and it plays during music during the whole stream. And of course if I needed to, I could always hit this button to turn off, on or off the music on the stream. Last but not least, the computer. I mentioned that the computer is not actually doing any of the video encoding, which is the way I like it. I don't like to trust a computer to actually do that encoding. I prefer having a dedicated device. But I was using the computer to control the switcher because the buttons on the switcher aren't enough to control things like the graphics or fine tune the audio. So for the most of the program, I was actually using the interface on the laptop to control the stream, including doing things like loading different graphics into the media player, or actually going into Photoshop and creating graphics to drop on top of the screen and then exporting them into the media pool and being able to then drag them into the media player. So this was working out pretty well and I was, you know, kind of on the fly loading, creating different, different cats and showing these things on the screen. I also had the intro and the outro slides ready to go and switch the program out to just, you know, logo at the end. One of the things that I did notice that I wanted in the stream by the end was I actually wanted to be able to pull up a browser window and type in websites and like show stuff that Lily was talking about. So I noticed that as she was saying things like, oh, we're doing this challenge on the forum or hey, we'll go check out this other video, I could have very easily been sitting here pulling up that website on my laptop and showing it on the stream. I just didn't have that set up ahead of time. So after the stream, I went and I rigged that up, which is what this other laptop is for. And this was a fun little trick. So I went and I set my desktop background to bright green and also hid the menu bar by default until you swipe up to see it. And that's gonna let me chroma key this out so I can show just this window. I do wish there was a way to get rid of the shadow, but it ends up being fine when you tweak the chroma key settings enough anyway. So with the computer outputting this, I can go into the switcher, configure a chroma key to that same green, tweak the key adjustments till it looks right, and then when I show that on the air, I now have a little overlay of my browser window on top of the video. And you can see that if I shrink my browser window, you know, I can put it wherever I want. So if she's sitting there in the middle and I want just like a little skinny thing on the side, I can show stuff she's talking about over here and they'll be able to see it on the stream. So definitely planning on taking advantage of that more for the next stream now that I got that all set up. Of course, it's not limited to a browser. It's whatever I have on the laptop will just show up on the stream. So I can pull up image files or whatever I want. And of course, because this is actually using the regular chroma key feature in the ATEM Mini, it means that the on off buttons on the device itself control the keyer. So that gives me a nice physical button I can hit if I want to get rid of whatever is showing up on top of the scene. So that's about it for the behind the scenes tour of this little studio setup. As you can see, it's not too involved. It was just one camera, but I think it came out pretty well. We had a lot of fun with it. Lily was able to see the chat comments coming in on the confidence monitor up there, and we had a good time. So if you want to see the final result, that's on her channel. I will leave a link down below. You can go check that out and check out her 45 minute live stream of talking about money and budgeting and tasting donuts. So thanks so much for watching this behind the scenes. Please leave a comment down below if you saw anything in this room I forgot to mention when we were doing this little quick tour. I have a couple other videos on the Blackmagic A10 Mini that you should definitely check out if you're interested in that device, including things like how to add graphics to your streams. I've been really enjoying this device, having a lot of fun with it, and I'm looking forward to making more videos about it in the future. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks so much, and I'll see you in the next one.